Forget hormone replacement therapy and stop thinking the older you get, the less important sexuality becomes. Nothing could be further from the truth. That's like losing the ability to walk or breathe. If you're a human being on planet Earth, this is an important part of being a man or woman. A woman or a man that can't perform as a woman or man is a setup for an unfulfilling relationship, not just with the other person, but also with yourselves, even if you're alone. It doesn't matter what age you are, you should be a fully alive man or woman able to enjoy life to your last day. You should not slowly be losing your sight, your hearing, your memory, or your ability to enjoy your own sexuality. Everything has a purpose. This isn't just for fun. You need your hormones flowing to stay young, to keep your immune system strong, to not get sick, to keep your mood and your spirits up. Nobody wants to be around a frustrated, negative, crabby, miserable person. I'm here to help with that. I'm here to help you be fully alive until the day you die, if you're alone or not. Somebody needs to talk about this and I'm not afraid to break the self-help barriers that everyone else is afraid to. Don't let people around you bring you down. You're not supposed to slowly wither away while others have all the fun. With us today we have female sexuality expert Catherine Clark and what she has to say applies no matter what age you are. If you really care about your health and happiness, I urge you to watch this video even if you're a bit squeamish about the mature subject matter. I'm here to help you. You deserve happiness. You deserve fulfillment on all levels. There are so many women who are experiencing midlife depressions around their sexuality and my heart just went out to them because even though your sexuality may change after you've gone through menopause, it's still there. And in so many ways it can be deeper and more meaningful than it's ever been before. And just because you're, you know, over 40, over 50, over 60, over 70, it's never too late. And there's always the opportunity, no matter how sexually fulfilled and sexually active you've been or not, to explore and to go further for longevity, for rejuvenation, uh, you know, to make you clearer, smarter, improve your memory, improve your life force, improve your uh, immunity, everything. I mean, I think in large part that's, that's what sex is about. Your sexual energy is a creativity, a passionate force, a life force that can be used for anything in your life. Exactly. And it doesn't matter what age you are, it really doesn't. I know women in their 80s and their 90s that are still having intercourse with their 80 and 90 year old husbands and they say it's better than ever. And a lot of that is mental. A lot of that is just getting into the headspace. I'm sure if you start to think about some sexy situation that begins to turn you on, you'll notice that you begin to have lubrication. Now what age group are we talking here? Well, I'm 57 now. And when I stopped bleeding, I noticed that my sexuality was really changing and I'm really happy to say that I'm not totally led by my genitals anymore. I have some more discrimination, but I also have a deeper and more fulfilling pleasure because I know a lot more about myself. And I experience my sexuality in a full body way. It's not so genitally oriented. So in my talk yesterday, I was really encouraging the women in the room to explore with themselves. Also do some reading. There are so many books out there. Uh, one of my favorites is ESO, Extended Sexual Orgasm. If you have a partner who's willing to practice that technique, you can find yourself having orgasms without even being touched between your legs or in your genital area. It's phenomenal. Many women who have orgasmic difficulties, especially after menopause, find that they need to be stimulated deeper in the vagina on the anterior part, uh, which is more the front side, so lifting up towards the front. So you may want to invest in some sex toys, some curved sex toys that will allow you to explore the front part where the G-spot is, there are many sensitive areas there and in my opinion that's the roots of the clitoris. So sometimes if you're pressing that area forward and giving yourself clitoral stimulation, you'll find that you can have extraordinary orgasms like you've never experienced before. 
You know, I have a lot of women my age and older, and their biggest issue is finding a partner. And I think that one solution to that is simply going with younger men. You know, that's very beneficial for a younger man to have the benefits of the experience and sensuality and the self-love of a woman who's older. We can do them a great favor by helping them learn how to really be present with a woman, pleasure a woman, and that it's not all just about orgasm, but touching, holding, caressing, the love-making conversation, the foreplay that leads into love-making. And so it's really kind of a win-win situation because you can benefit from their you know sexual appetite from their stamina I personally like to um, go with men who have been practicing seminal retention which means they can have multiple orgasms without ejaculating therefore they never lose their erection so they can make love to you until you say honey I've had enough thank you how old can a woman be to still Experience this kind of fun. Well, there is no age limit. I mean, the Taoist immortals, you know, women who were hundreds of years old, were having sex. I recently had a client who was in her 70s and her partner passed away. She had been sexually inactive for about a year and a half or two years, and she contacted me because she met someone she wanted to explore, you know, a little bit of sex with. So what I suggested she do is that she get some aloe vera, fresh aloe vera or packaged aloe vera that's organic and 100%, but fresh aloe vera you just peel off the green leaf and use the slime as lubrication and begin to massage the inside of her legs, her labia, eventually her vagina, and then investing in a sex toy, some sort of, um, you know, at least an inch in diameter, bigger if she thought he was going to be bigger, but at least an inch in diameter. And then once she lubricated and aroused herself, begin to use that to open up the vagina. There is a medical condition called senile atrophy or disuse atrophy. It's the old use it or lose it. So women who have not been sexually active, it's really good to use um, a sex toy to open up and some lubricant like the aloe vera and kind of rejuvenate your vagina before you try to get with someone if it's been a while because it, it may be painful in the heat of passion with your lover. So while you're just with yourself, of course, if you feel comfortable, you can talk to your lover and he can help you with this part of it. And you know, men love to take care of us. There are some women who email me saying it's just too painful. They, they think it's just because of their age. Or, you know, I might as well give up on this because it's just too painful now. Would you say it has something to do with health or the fact that they're, it's, it's a relationship issue? or? Any? Well, I was talking with Dr. Gabriel Cousins, who is a psychiatrist. And after my talk, when I shared with him some of the issues that the women were asking me about in the room and he said a lot of it is psychological. He felt that at least, you know, a large percentage, I don't think he put a number on it, is psychological. And certainly older women who were born, you know, in the 30s and the 40s or the 20s, there was a whole different uh, social attitude about sexuality. And I think a good place to start is talking to their girlfriends who may be more open and um, exploring themselves, how they really feel. Because if you want to have sexual fulfillment, maybe it's good to let go a little bit. You know, be willing to explore. Now, if you're having pain, I myself had painful intercourse at one point during, um, you know, the part of my menopause after I start, stopped bleeding and it was really surprising to me. But I found with more lubrication, actually using some aloe vera, even though I was very aroused, I was, wasn't as lubricated. And then also just making sure you're hydrated because if you're dehydrated, you're not going to produce as much sexual fluids. And of course, dehydration is part of aging. So that's an important part of it. That did, however, pass. 
it isn't a problem that I'm having now. But because of this disuse atrophy, it is really important to experiment maybe with some aloe vera. And there are women who have fibroids because they're not healthy and when scraped or rubbed they can bleed and mm -hmm. so obviously being healthy and eating right is a big part of it also. And uh, I believe strongly being with the right person mm -hmm. or the wrong person can determine like your body says, no, 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 this isn't the right person. And then it'll do anything it can to not let that happen. You're right. And there's a lot of women out there that are stuck in relationships where they feel like, oh my God, at my age, I'm not going to give, I can't stop. This is, I'm, I'm stuck. I mean, and they just do whatever they can to just continue this miserable existence and they're just not happy. Happiness is a choice. I mean, with sex, without sex, happiness is a choice. I just went through a situation where I moved to an area, the person I moved there to be with made herself unavailable. I still accomplished our goals. Just, I won't go through the hardships that I accomplished, but one day I realized if anyone steals my joy, that's my choice. I can choose to be happy no matter what is going on and my secret to happiness is gratitude. I give thanks for at least 20 things before I go to bed at night. When I wake up in the morning, I start to think of the things that I'm grateful for. And I mean, it can be silly. It can be stuff you think is pitiful. But if you practice it, it will work and it will get better and better. It can be, I'm grateful. I, I mean, I used to say, I'm grateful I have my cat and my cat loves me. Of course I was thinking, poor me, nobody loves me, only my cat loves me. But I was able to turn that around and reframe it and say, thank goodness I have this cat. This cat loves me. Thank goodness I have a roof over my head. Thank goodness I have food to eat. I'm thankful I have the intelligence I have. But you know, Marcus, I've been eating raw for 30 years. I'm very healthy. And you mentioned fibroids, this is a thing that needs to be detoxified in the body. There's so many books on detoxifying right now. Going on juice feasting. It's so much more fun than 30 years ago and we practiced all those austerities. Find a meetup in your area. Go online to meetup.com. Put in your zip code. Put in raw food. Put, put in cleanse. Put in vegetarian. Put in vegan. It will search for all those things and find groups in your area that you can join and meet other like-minded people that you can explore eating healthier whether it's all the way raw or whether it's just vegetarian baby step by baby step no matter how old you are you can get better you can turn your health around and um, that doesn't just affect your body it affects your mind and it affects you spiritually when you clean out your tissues you're also going to be more able to give thanks and to feel your intuition to feel your passion for life i was just talking to you know dave the trucker he's been raw like i think four years and he is just living life from one moment to the next following his intuition and exploring what that's like and it's so beautiful so i really encourage women to to follow his example follow my example and take one baby step at a time are you suggesting to them try to make it work play with yourself if your guy isn't making you happy or would you su suggest that they have the courage to move on their own and if it's not working well i'll tell you the truth my experience is if you have a man who's providing who loves you and he's inadequate take care of it yourself if you're with someone that you're supporting he has alcohol and drug problems move on there are not always men available I mean, there's just, just doesn't seem to be enough men in our age group really to go around. So if you have a man that is loving you, providing for you, um, taking care of you on other levels, you can see a counselor. Um, I do talk to women whose husbands just aren't interested. So you're saying take care of yourself? I would say so. I mean, I, yeah. I would say to 
Don't you think that's a little frustrating for a woman to have to take care of herself and not have a man be able to uh, be there? It's only frustrating if you let it be frustrating. Think about the women who don't have a man. True. Think about the women in Africa who men put dirt in their yonis and then make love to them and rip it to pieces and it's tearing. I mean, wow. we're some of the most blessed women in the world. I mean, think about countries where they, you know, treat women like cattle and make right. love to them through a hole in the sheet. I mean, sometimes it gives me nightmares to think about what women in this world have. Right. I mean, it doesn't make it okay, but it certainly puts more into perspective. There are a lot of women that follow me that are kind of really uptight, conservative, you know, old school. Well, I've they, never gone to a group where women are, you know, where we're exploring each other's yonis themselves. <laughs> you know, it's not, yeah. maybe I would someday. It's just, you know, it's not something I'm that interested in. But even if you're uptight, repressed, hung up, lock the door, get the mirror, have a look at your equipment. If you want to feel good, you want to feel better, and you want to open up, take a little baby step. It can be a secret. Nobody has to know but you. You see, saw the video I just put mm -hmm. out. I could tell that some of these women were like, I don't know, the older church ladies. Yeah, something about them, you could tell they're not satisfied in the sex department. You could just tell. They, they, they basically don't go on this subject, but this subject matter is taboo. Don't even talk about it. Don't go there. And I think anybody who's satisfied in the department would be thrilled to share, to talk about this. So what advice do you give these people, these women who who might be watching this video and immediately be ready to say, oh my God, you should not be putting this on the internet. Don't even talk about this any matter. I think that women who feel that way have every right to feel that way. I mean, wherever you are is where you need to be. However, you know, our Creator gave us sex, not just for procreation, obviously, but to be used as a powerful force for our awakening, for our health, and in Taoism, in Hinduism, in Buddhism, these practices are used to increase the life force and the vitality. And do some reading in that area. Do some research. There is a whole world that I think would be very liberating to you. And like I said, do it in secret. There, there's women that email me saying, um, the older you get, the less important sex is, the more you should learn to appreciate the finer, the things I'm learning, you know, all, all that. You've heard this a many times, but like it shouldn't be part of their life anymore. What do you say to that? I've heard that a lot, and that may be true for some people, for men and for women. That may be true. Um, I would suspect that there is a lack of vitality in the talk I gave, can food put you in the mood? My main point is, if you have a lot of life force and a lot of vitality, you are going to have a lot of sexual energy. It doesn't matter what age you are. It doesn't matter what age you are. It really doesn't. I know women in their 80s and their 90s that are still having intercourse with their 80 and 90 year old husbands and they say it's better than ever. And the ability to have orgasms is still there? They have orgasms. Their husbands can still have erections. Um, if you're dealing with a husband who can't have erections anymore, you know what? There are lots of ways to have pleasure and to pleasure one another through touching, increasing the oxytocin that way, pleasuring one another through massage, through, um, you know, dribbling your favorite foods, licking them off, having fun. I mean, come on, if you're 60 or 70, you're retired, you should be having fun that you've never had before. You should be making your grandchildren look like the old people. I mean, for heaven's sakes, now you have the time. Now you have the money. And if you've been in a long-term relationship, you probably have an incredible amount of trust and knowing of one another that you could figure out what would really pleasure your partner and make him happy. And 
the same with him and sometimes men really need encouragement you know sometimes you just have to whisper in their ear oh honey after all these years you really turn me on you make me hot you know I even feel wet for you oh baby wouldn't you like to try something different tonight <laughs> you know what guy wouldn't be interested so it's it's important for older women to realize this is not taboo this is not like oh we shouldn't be there anymore this is this is normal it's okay if you're healthy you should still have it right? absolutely sexuality is one of the most normal things in the world now I mean, the losing of hormones that is just basically a health issue right well you know your hormones change that's all it isn't like it was before but it doesn't mean it all disappears and it all goes away. And if you're eating a healthy diet, going through hormonal changes, that's all they are. And if you're not bleeding anymore, then you're retaining that energy and you can use it in a whole lot of different ways. If you experiment, I think you'll find out. I mean, I loved my period. I would have been happy to still be having it. But so many women say, oh, I'm so glad I don't have to deal with that anymore. I still have a cycle and I think all women have cycles with the moon and men have cycles with the moon. That's even becoming popular now. The uh, test test to pause you know and men recognizing the changes that they go through in their you know 50s and 60s as their testosterone changes um, that just means you can explore because you're in a whole new frontier I think it's pretty exciting really well, what, what advice would you give for women who say that their hormones are going down and they feel like they see it slipping away I would say that some of the best things in life are the subtle things. And while it might not be the raging herd of horses it once was, it may be the beautiful blow flowing stream that cut the Grand Canyon. It's still there. And if you explore you may find that especially after menopause that energy is easier than ever to recycle into your health and vitality but i'm sure you found being a raw foodist that you can't a healthy raw foodist or just healthy in general have much better hormone reaction than those who live the standard american life well, that's true. I mean, hormones are so affected by the hormones that you're eating. If you're eating meat, chicken especially, it gives little girls breasts. It's full of hormones. There's all the um, hormone um, in, the, in the environment, in the pollution, and cleaning fluids, things that affect our hormones. It's not like just because you've gone through menopause, they're gone and nothing is happening. You know, Montauk Chia's book, Transforming Stress into Vitality, is extraordinary. There's, um, he has cultivating female energy, cultivating male energy. Montauk Chia writing about the techniques of using this energy to transform your vitality. But eating a diet that is conducive to the best health ever is a diet that's high in vegetables, fruits, grains, nuts, seeds, but especially living food. And that's food that's living when you eat it. That would be sprouts and cultured foods. In the raw food world, we culture nuts, seeds, and vegetables. These not only provide pre-digested nutrients, they give you the friendly flora. The reason they say 80% of your immune system is in your gut is because of the friendly flora. Also, cultured foods give you additional enzymes, which every cell of your body needs. So those are the highest vibration foods you can eat, the living foods, the sprouts, sprouted nuts, sprouted seeds, sprouted grain, and cultured nuts, seeds, and vegetables. If you change your diet even by adding those in, you can still have, you know, your favorite other foods. Just add in the good foods. This was an interesting phenomenon, but women who were on usually a hundred percent raw diet, their periods become less 
unless, of course, the difficulty or the discomfort with that goes away. And then eventually, they would be having their moon cycle, but there would be no ministration. Yet, they were still able to conceive and have children. I have a friend who had seven children. She never had a period in still, you know, I don't know how many years, but many years. She was not having a period when she became pregnant the first time she went on to have seven children. She breastfed all those children. It's all energy. It's all energy. You summed it up right there. Is there anything else you want to say? Well, I really wish the women watching this the to have the courage to experiment, step out of your comfort zone, and take it to the next level because it's one of the greatest pleasures in life. You deserve happiness and deep fulfillment on all levels. This is freedom. You deserve happiness and deep fulfillment on all levels.